Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of Joe Knows the 2021 NFL Draft Class, where today we're going to be covering, or I should say we're going to be reviewing your Jacksonville Jaguars 2021 Draft Class. I'm so looking forward to it. This one was a great one to do. It was also uh, a little more difficult just because there's so many good players to cover. You guys did this so right. Absolutely love it. I love your rebuild. We're going to get into that juicy content in one, in one second. Let's get through the bells and whistles and where you can follow the show. And again, that's Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Podbean, Spotify, and Facebook, where we have two pages. That's Toilets to Titles and When a Family Breaks, uh, where we do a lot of trading of sports memorabilia, sports memorabilia. I always have trouble with that word. I don't know why. I got to slow it down with memorabilia. But check it out. It's a lot of fun. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It takes a, not even a half a second to just Give it a, a quick click, and it helps us out a lot. And uh, and subscribe. We have a great team over here where we're, where we are putting out more and more content on both the NFL and uh, fantasy football, which is our which is our our main responsibility, if you will. Uh, that's what this uh, that's what Toilets Titles was started as. Uh, really focused on uh, on fantasy, on draft fantasy, fantasy football. And now we're bringing in more NFL content, and we're growing and growing. It's going great, and we want you guys to to be a witness to everything that we're doing over here. Give us that Apple review if you can. If you have like thirty, if you have like thirty seconds, go over to Apple. If you're not watching on, on Apple already, go to, over to Apple and uh, give us a five star review. It helps us out a lot. And also, you can go to Patreon.com/toilets-to-titles to see how you can further support the show. Now, moving on to your Jacksonville Jaguars. All right, guys, you're doing your rebuild right. You had a total of nine picks, which is obviously better than the seven that most teams go into a draft with. Uh, but it's not like it's 10 or 11, but you had extra picks. And most importantly, you had seven picks in the first four rounds. So a team, if they know what they're doing, they're walking out of this draft with seven picks in the first round, first four rounds. They should be walking out with a boatload of talent. And that is what you did. Some teams, some front offices, when they're given this opportunity, they blow it, and you can kind of tell right away. But not you guys. Not you guys. You guys hit home runs all over the place in this draft. I absolutely loved it, and there's so much to cover. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit so this isn't a really long video. Uh, but you guys had two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and two fourth-round picks. And I try to develop a theme with uh, – I try to see if there's a theme with every team's draft class. Some teams load up on defense. Some teams focus on the offensive line. And these things, you know, these type of themes tell you what a team's needs were and uh, what they're thinking and what they need to accomplish. And But you guys, you know what? You got talent everywhere. On both sides of the ball, you got premium talent. And leading off with, you know, your first pick, number one overall, I think a guy you kind of reach for a little bit, Trevor Lawrence. All right, just kidding. Obviously, we all know Trevor Lawrence. This guy, quarterback out of Clemson, if you're a big college football fan, you've been following this guy for the past three years. He's been on everyone's radar as the number one quarterback uh, whenever he decided to come out. And uh, I think it was his third year, right? I don't think he did all four years at Clemson. <clears throat> this guy was phenomenal. We're all waiting to see him come and play in the NFL. This is probably the most highly regarded quarterback coming out of college since Andrew Luck. He's like one of those generational quarterbacks. And uh, that's you know probably the highest rated quarterback since Luck, who was the highest rated quarterback, I believe, since Peyton Manning, who I believe was the highest rated quarterback since John Elway. And here's a little factoid, as I say here at the blue bar at the bottom, that all those quarterbacks were actually drafted by the Colts. Elway was drafted by the Baltimore Colts. And then uh, you know Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck was uh, drafted by the uh, uh, by the uh, Indianapolis Colts. So, you know, I, I'll tell you, when Colts pick a quarterback, they know what they're doing. So John Elway obviously forced a trade to the Broncos. He's never, he never actually played a game for for the Colts, but they did draft him. So I'll tell you, if you're a quarterback being drafted number one overall by the Colts, you really have to like your chances to make it as an all-time legendary player. I'll tell you that. But Trevor Lawrence, there's really not, not much else to say. This guy is just phenomenal. And all football fans, we're all looking forward to watching him play. I'm a Giants fan. Uh, when the Giants and the Jaguars occasionally meet up, I'm not looking forward to that matchup. That's not going to be great. I hope, you know, I hope he doesn't put up good numbers against my team. But other than that, I hope he balls out, and I have no doubt he will. 
your franchise is in great hands. And congratulations to the Jaguars on getting Trevor Lawrence. So moving on to your second pick in the first round, Travis Etienne. This guy is Trevor Lawrence's good buddy from Clemson, running back. And uh, can you imagine these two play like, you know, running backs don't tend to last all that long, but say Etienne plays for like 12 to 15 years and say, well, say he plays like 10 to 12 years. He's a running back. Uh, and uh, and Trevor Lawrence plays for like, you know, 15 to 20. But the amount of time these guys would have played together with both the NFL and NCAA combined, that's really cool. And they both go in the first round, both from Clemson. They both go to Jacksonville. What an awesome pairing this is. Man, I, I mean, my favorite running back coming out of this draft by an inch, just by a little smidgen, by a nose, um, was Najee Harris. But, man, it really doesn't matter. You, these are the two top running backs, in, in, in my opinion, in this draft. And Travis Etienne, this guy is, what a home run pick. I mean, it's not a stretch to say that, given his talent, his production at, at Clemson over, you know, over like three years. This guy does it all. He is a three-down running back. This guy is a triple threat. As they say down here, he runs, he receives, and he's a stud in the return game. He does it all. Me, myself, I'm not a guy who's a big fan of playing my my starters, especially like my 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 number one players uh, as a kick return or a punt returner, but they'll, they'll probably do it. And I don't blame them. You want to put your talent back there. But for me, myself, I believe in putting like your number four wide receiver back there or like your backup safety, someone who's just who's got good hands, who can secure the ball and get, hopefully get you some yardage. Um, I don't like putting my, my best players in that position of returning, but he probably will. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. That's just a Joe preference. But man, you got a true stud here. And uh, he smashed all times of all he set all types of records at Clemson. So you have so much to look forward to with this guy. He also fights through tackles. Uh, he's a in the receiving game. This guy is a yards after the catch machine. I mean, this guy does it all. And in another thing too, I realize that you know he's got another good running back that he's going to be competing against with James Robinson. This guy was a, a, a phenom last year. All of us who are uh, who, who are in fantasy leagues who are really into it. We love James Robinson. I actually play in three leagues, standard leagues, and I, I was able to get him uh, in two of my leagues after the first week. He was like my first name that I put in on waivers. I got him, and he helped me. He helped me. He helped me win one of my leagues, which was like my 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 big dollar league. So thank you very much, James Robinson. And uh, but your running back core is looking phenomenal. But obviously, that's interesting to watch to see if James Robinson is gonna. Uh, get more snaps in the beginning of Etienne's career. I'm sure Etienne eventually is going to become the number one running back. He might even start off that way. But you have an interesting situation there. It's a, it's a good situation to have with those that little two-headed monster over there that you guys are building. And But I love this guy. I think he, he, even in fantasy, you want to get this guy pretty early, especially for um, especially for, for uh, leagues that are, um, I forgot what it's referred to as, not the standard league, but where you've got, you know, you're looking like three years down the road. Dynasty, dynasty. I'm brain farting. I'm focused on the Jaguars. I'm trying to talk dynasty at the same time. But anyway, for especially in a dynasty league, this guy's gonna be an absolute stud because if not this year, this Robinson might be might be eating into his touches. Uh certainly next year, the year after that, the year after that, Etienne is gonna be an absolute stud. He's gonna do it all. And I do think he's gonna be a top 10 running back pretty darn soon. So moving on to your second round pick. Uh first pick in the second round, Tyson Campbell, cornerback out of Georgia. Georgia Bulldogs, they know how to produce defensive players. You got, in my opinion, one of the best cornerbacks in the draft. This is a guy who easily could have went in the, you know, um, back end of the first round. I mean, you got him with the num number one pick in the second round. So it's, you know, it's not too crazy, of course. But um, this guy could even could have went a little higher. He's a phenomenal talent. He is six foot one, 193 pounds. That is great build for a cornerback. And this is a guy who's got He's got it. He's got everything. He's got the height, the weight, speed. These are intangibles that you can't teach. Either you got them or you don't. And then he's got the intangibles that he put a production of Georgia as a as a number one cornerback. He's coming into Jacksonville. He's going to over time. Cornerbacks have you not need to give him some time and space to develop. It's not easy to come into the NFL your rookie year and be like a stud cornerback. It's very very rare. Give him a little time. But this guy is going to eventually be. Your number, a true number one cornerback. I believe a shutdown cornerback. I think he's going to be whoever he covers. He's going to be. <laughs> you're basically going to have Campbell Island over there for the next ten years. So great, great value. Um, you know, at such a key position. 
You got a great pick with your first pick overall in the second round. Congratulations to you, Jaguars. You're doing your rebuild right. Look at that. You've got your franchise quarterback. You've got a great playmaker to, to pair with him. And now you've got a cornerback in the uh, in the second round who I think is getting an absolute stud for you for the next 10 to 12 years. Congratulations. Moving on, Walker Little. Walker Little was interesting. This, this is a guy who I think coming out of high school, he might have been like the number one rated uh, tackle prospect uh, in America. And uh, he played at Stanford. He, he didn't have much playing time, a lot of it due to uh, injury. Uh, in, two, in 2018, he had a very good year. He's with left tackle at Stanford, so he knows how to protect the blind side. 2019, I believe he started one game, then, then missed the rest of the year because of injury. Uh, and then um, last year, he took the COVID exemption. This guy has a lot of potential. And he's someone who I had, who I had my eye on for my team, the Giants, because they obviously, if you know anything about the Giants, they've had a, a hard time with our offensive line for about 10 years. And this is someone who... Um, you know, if the Giants didn't take offensive line in the first round, later on in the second and third round, Walker Little Stone, who I definitely had my eye on, and um, I think you got a good player here. Who he's, I, I highly, I doubt he's going to be starting this year. I don't know what your O line situation is in Jacksonville. I doubt he'll be starting this year, but I think by the end of the year, you're probably going to see him get more and more snaps, and he might be starting at either side of the line by the end of the year. But I like this guy a lot. I think he's got. I think he's got a lot of good potential. He just needs time to develop. But then he's a really good, uh, pretty tough, very smart, very heady uh, tackle prospect. And I like him a lot. Uh, Andre Cisco. Now, you'll see here at the at the blue bar, this is one of my sleeper picks in that uh, this, this, I think, third round pick where you got him, I thought was good. Because I don't think if you had waited to the fourth round, I, I don't think he would have made it there. Uh, this is a guy who, as a safety and safety along with tight end, are like two of my favorite positions in in the NFL in, in the game of football. And Syracuse safety, uh, you got him with the first pick overall, third round. This guy is six foot one, two hundred sixteen pounds. That is a that's a height and weight combination I love to see with a safety. That screams safety to me. And this guy is, I like this pick a lot. And I I think me and Coach Sheps uh, here at uh, Toilets and Titles, we had talked about safeties a little bit just just uh, through the chat a few times earlier in the year. And uh, Andre Cisco was a name that I kept bringing up a lot because I like this guy. I think he's going to be – I think he is an all-around safety. I think he's going to be an all-around safety uh, in the NFL. I think you have a potential pro bowler in the future that you got here with your third-round pick. And this guy, he does it all. He's a stud against the run, and he gets a lot of interceptions um, in the passing game. So. And that's what a safety is supposed to do. And, and, and don't get me wrong, great safeties also are very good at, at bringing the blitz when they're asked to blitz, uh, like on key downs. And, um, you know, I think he can do that as well. Uh, and uh, But this guy, third round pick, I, I think he's going to be eventually your a starting safety who is going to be, who has potential, for, legitimate potential for pro, to be a Pro Bowl caliber player. And you can say that about anyone potential, but I, I legitimately believe that with this guy. I really like Andre Cisco in your third round pick. Get, again, secondary is so key to building up in this pass happy league. And I think you got you got a guy here's gonna be an anchor in your secondary for the next 10 years. I believe it. Maybe not this year, but after that, for like the next 10 years after that, you have an anchor along with Tyson Campbell in your secondary. Man, you guys are hitting that out of the park with this draft. I love how you're using your picks. Just key, there's great value at key positions all over the place. I love it. Uh, Jay Tupele, and I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, defensive tackle at USC, six foot two, 305 pounds. You got him with the number one pick overall in the fourth round. And I thought this was a perfect spot in terms of value and in terms of where he was drafted. This is not the best, uh, by far, this is not the best defensive tackle uh, draft uh, class. Uh, it's, it's one of the weakest ones in a long time, actually. But for the fourth round, uh, to play, this is a great value spot for him where you got him. You got a guy who's got a nonstop motor and he's known as an upfield penetrator. Now he's pretty good at stopping the run, and that's usually that's usually what you're looking for with your defensive tackles, but you can improve in that area. But again, he's a fourth round pick. It'll take some time to develop and he can get there. But this guy is this is a guy who can disrupt, who can disrupt both the running game and the passing game from the interior. Uh, that's valuable because not many defensive tackles can do that. They're usually just focused on uh, stuff in the run. 
this guy right off the gate, right off the bat, can can be a disruptor behind the offensive line. Interesting pick. I like it a lot. I thought the value was fantastic. And again, I guess another theme for for this for this draft for your draft is that you're just kicking ass all over the place because you're getting great value with every pick. And and like I said earlier, you can you know, there are teams that you can give them ten picks, a lot of them in the early rounds, and they'll 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 stink it up one way or another. But not you, Jaguars. You did fantastic. I'll tell you. I forgot who your general manager is, uh, but Urban Meyer uh, as your coach. I'm sure he obviously had a say in all these picks, and I think he's he did a great job for you guys so far. Jordan Smith, here's another guy that I had my eye on for the Giants. I'm a Giants fan again for the mid-rounds. This is a guy who I like a lot. He's got traits. He's six foot six, 255 pounds. These are traits I love. You know, I want to see height on my defense, especially at the edge. And this guy brings it. His last two si- last two uh, seasons combined at University of Alabama, Birmingham, he had 14 and a half sacks. I think the last year was four and a half sacks, and the year before that was was two sacks. I'm sorry, it was 10 sacks. Um, this guy is long, athletic. He, he's got like a nice motor. He's always moving around. He doesn't really, even when he's going to to stop the run or tackle someone, he doesn't really like hesitate. He doesn't stop. He always keeps his legs moving. And this guy's got some really, really good traits that you want at this point in the fourth round that you can work with. I like this guy a lot. And again, I had my eyes on him uh, for fourth round for the Giants. I would have, if they had gotten him, I wouldn't have blinked an eye. I would have, I would not have blinked one eye. I would have been happy with this pick. I think he did really, really well. Okay, Luke Farrell. Now we're getting to the portion of the draft, the stocking stuffers, the fifth, sixth, seventh round. I have to the, your last two players or two players I had to look read I had to read up on a little more. I was a little familiar with Luke Farrell because I'd been hearing his name um, a little more and more uh, for like the last few weeks leading up to the draft. And this is a guy who he's built like a tight end. Now he didn't have a lot of production at Ohio State. Uh, he got him with the first pick in the fifth round. Uh, he's a tight end out of Ohio State. Uh, he didn't have a lot of production, but I think that really had more to do just it. Ohio State is loaded with so many weapons, wide receiver, running back, that I don't think they really incorporate their tight end too much, except to really try to use them more as like run blockers and, and pass protectors. But this guy, for a fifth, fifth round pick, and finding good tight ends coming out of the NCAA is not easy. Uh, they don't always translate well to the NFL. You've got a guy here, six foot five, a little over 250 pounds. To me, that's like, that is built like a tight end and you're taking a tight end like a project in the latter rounds these are some intangible traits that i'm looking for and i think like i say down here in the blue bar i think this could be a sneaky good pick you know for the future if if he develops and i like i think i think in the fifth round i think this is a good pick if you need a tight end you're looking at the the board and who's available luke farrell i think this is some good stuff to work with so i like what you got here jacksonville i really did and then your last pick uh was your sixth round pick the 25th I should say the 25th pick overall in the sixth round. Didn't bother with the, with the seventh round pick. Not a big, big deal. Who cares? He had nine picks overall anyway. And again, he had seven picks in the first four, first four rounds. Good Lord. That's incredible. Your last pick in the sixth round, you took Jalen Camp. Now, this is someone I had to read up on. This is someone who I definitely was not familiar with. Now, this guy, I love these traits. And again, these late round picks, especially the sixth and seventh round picks, you want those intangible traits that you can that you can't coach up, that they're just there. Either you have them or you don't. This guy's six foot two, 225 pounds, comes out of Georgia Tech. Now he is, apparently he's fast. He's an athletic freak. Uh, apparently even even he's, um, I think he put up 30 reps um, uh, lifting weights uh, in uh, at his um, pro day. And, you know, very impressive for a wide receiver. Uh, 30 reps at the bench press, very impressive for a wide receiver. And uh, again, he's got speed, size, strength, and he comes from a school. Just to point it out, this doesn't mean that he's automatically going to succeed in the NFL. But I, I find these types of trends interesting. He comes from the same school that produced Megatron, Demarius Thomas, and and Darren Waller. So for me, me myself though, that intrigues me, and kind of bell goes off my head, and I think, okay, ding, ding, ding. Keep an eye on Jalen Camp down the road to see how this guy produces. I, I just find those, I find that interesting. So Jalen Camp, keep that name in the back of your mind. Keep a little bit, of, keep a little bit of an eye on him going down the road to see how this guy may progress over the next few years. 
those are some intangible traits that you can't teach and that I would love to work with and I'm, when I'm taking a guy at the uh, in the sixth in the sixth round. So I think you did so well here in Jacksonville. I really do. I love your picks. Love what you did. I love how your rebuild is going. I think you're just you're doing a great job. You know, you've got in, in Florida, you've got Tampa Bay, who are the defending Super Bowl champs. You've got Miami Dolphins, who are a team who are absolutely on the rise. They're doing their their rebuild right. And you guys, you're in the beginning stages of your rebuild, but you're doing it right. And you guys are going to be a team to contend with pretty darn quickly. So that wraps it up. But before we move on, let me just let you know where you can follow all of us here at Toilets to Titles. Here are the Twitter handles for all of us. We're up to like 10 members of our team now. All the great bunch of guys follow all of us. We all bring we all bring something different to the table here. We all contribute in different ways, and we're all a great bunch of guys. We do the stuff for you guys because we love fantasy football. We love NFL football. We love the NCAA. We love it all, and we want to put out as much content for you as possible. And please, before I go, don't forget, to, once again, don't forget, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell, give us that five-star Apple review for a shot at a free entry to our Frankenstein League, which is a fantasy league, a draft fantasy league that we've started for you, our viewers. We participate as well. I'm going to be doing it for the first time this year. I'm looking forward to it. We've got some different rules, and I think you'll like it a lot. But everyone, it's been a great episode. It was so much fun covering your Jacksonville Jaguars. You guys are hitting out of the park, and I love what you're doing. Peace. I'll see you tomorrow, and have a good day, and good night, everyone.